Hello everyone, this is Andy and welcome back to Med School EU. We're going to continue on with the last section of the cell in the biology from the IMAT specifications. And this is going to be a very short video on the concept called chromosome maps. I personally don't think anything's going to come up uh, on the IMAT exam about this topic because it is quite advanced genetics. However, I'm going to give you a quick introduction from what I learned in the undergraduate class classes about uh, genetics. And we learned a little bit about chromosome mapping and how it came to being a concept and how we actually place different alleles on parts of a chromosome. So the definition of chromosome mapping is basically using the frequency, the recombinant offspring frequency, and using that in order to map out where the chromosome genes are located. So if we have a karyotype of, you know, humans, and they would go from largest to smallest, and they would continue on until we have the sex chromosome at the very end, basically we know from the, the gene mapping we know on which part, so if we enlarge this, we know exactly on which part, or we can approximate on which part the genes are located in. And that's what's called chromosome mapping. And we're going to go through the process of how scientists were able to make these discoveries and make assumptions on where the genes are located in each of the chromosomes and the significance of this concept. So the first person that began to play with this concept was called Alfred Sturtvant. And Alfred Sturtvant basically took off uh, doing experiments with uh, dragonflies, Drosophila dragonflies. And using those dragonflies, he was able to see which genes uh, in the offspring were recombinant and which frequencies occurred in the offspring and therefore he realized that using those frequencies you're able to map out a linkage map on the chromosome to see exactly where the genes are located and which ones are going to be go through a recombination and which ones will not so if we take a look at an example here first this first one right here and if we're measuring three different genes so let's say this is a section of uh, a, a gene or a chromosome and each of these lines represents the location of a gene so we will have uh, for example gene a right here then we would have gene b on the other side and gene c right in the middle so when we have these three he estimated in his drosophilia experiments is that between a and c there was an 8% chance of a recombination, and I'll explain what that means. Between C and B, there was a 2% chance of recombination, and between A and B, there was a 9.6% chance of recombination. Now, I'm going to explain what these numbers mean and why the numbers, the, the further the distance between a gene, the higher the number, and why the number is lower between closer genes. Well, basically, his concept states that if, if you are going to map out genes, the first thing you're going to do is go through recombinant offspring frequencies. So you're going to have uh, a parent um, and another parent, male and female, they're going to reproduce and they're going to form different offspring, right? And these offspring will have various frequencies of genes. And you're going to pick a gene and see, so we're going to pick A, B, and C, the three different genes, and we're going to see their recombination frequencies. And we have determined that the recombination between these would be uh, A and C would recombine 8% of the time, a and B would recombine 9.6% of the time, and C and B would recombine 2% of the time. Now, what does recombination mean? And we, we talked about the process of recombination in meiosis. It happens in meiosis 1, in the prophase 1 stage. And what occurs is that two genes 
So if we have one like this and the blue one like that, they basically do a crossover right here. So it happens a crossover and now the yellow one would have part or a segment of the blue and the blue one would have a segment of the yellow. And these would go through the process of, this would be called recombination that occurs in uh, prophase one of uh, meiosis one. And recombination, the significance of it is that what are the chances that gene A and gene C would recombine? And the chances are 8% of the time. Now, what are the chances of A and B recombining? It's a little bit higher. Why is it higher? Because the distance between them is bigger. And recombination is basically the, the splitting of the gene. So what is the chance if uh, a chromosome has A, C, and B, what is the chance that recombination will result in A being separated from B? It's 9.6, because if you separate here, A would remain on the original chromosome, and B and C would go on and be on the other chromosome because of recombination. However, if we had a split right here, which happens 2% of the time, C and A would remain on the chromosome, but B would be on the new chromosome because of recombination. And this only happens 2% of the time. However, this here happens 9.6% of the time. So looking at another example right here with the white chromosome, let's just uh, imagine that we have 100, we have 100 germ cells that go through meiosis and they're going to produce 400 gametes. If you don't know how I got 400, look back in the previous video about the topic of meiosis and how it produces gametes. Now we're going to end up with 400 gametes. And if a recombination event occurred in the space, separating two given genes in 10 of those cells, so 10 genes, so let's say we have given genes, right? We have gene A, let's mark them by the color. So we got gene A. We got gene uh, B right here, and the, this one, I believe it's this color. Uh, well, let, let's mark it with white because it's, it's a darker color, and that's going to be gene C. If, if recombination event occurred in the space separating two given genes, so let's say it would be A and B, uh, and, and 10 of those cells, so in 10 of the germ cells, we're going to have the separation between A and, and B. So 10 germ cells go through recombination and they separate A and B. So what we end up with is uh, 20 recombinant chromatids, 20 chromatids w would be producing during phase one. And 20 gametes would eventually receive recombinant chromosomes. And what you have is 20 out of 400 that would equal to be 5%. So how did I get 20 chromatids? Well, remember that when you produce the gametes, each germ cell would produce four gametes. So you'd have one, two, three, four. And if you remember only one, if you have, so at the beginning, if you have uh, a chromosome, only one of the chromatids would go through a process of recombination, not both. Only one goes through the process of recombination, meaning that once you have separated everything, you've gone through meiosis completely, meiosis one and two, you're going to end up with these regular ones and you're going to have one 
and 2 here, that would have recombination. That's why only 2, it's 20, not 40, but it would be 20 chromatids being produced. Now, 20 out of 400 gametes is going to have 5% of separation between gene A and gene B. And we could conclude that these gametes are 5. So the units that they use, whoa, that's a crazy 5. Look at that. Now, let's try this again. Yes. Now, so 5... And they call them, the units uh, of separation are called MAP units, so MU. So there would be five MU apart right here. And that's the significance of it. Now, obviously, if you are going from A to C, then the number would be much higher because the, the, uh, the significance of having split right here is a lot higher than having the split right here. And typically these two would only, they would be together. If they're going through recombination, they would still remain intact 95% of the time. And they would only go through this separation 5% of the time. And that's why we labeled B a lot closer to C because C would have something higher, maybe something like 48%. Uh, um, and remember, you cannot have anything higher than 50%. So your recombination frequency cannot be higher. It cannot exceed 50%. It has to be below that. Now, why is that? Well, because only one sister chromatid goes through recombination, not both, only one. So you're, you can have a maximum of 50% of recombination offspring frequency. So if, if it is at 50%, that simply means that they would be separated all the time. Every single time that that specific sister chromatid goes through a rec a recombination, it would uh, split the two genes apart. And now, of course, if, if we're looking at uh, B and C here, we would have to take 48 because between A and C, it's 48%. Now, between B and C, it would have to be 48 minus 5. It would split 43% of the time. So that, that's how we determine the location of each gene on the chromosome. And it's, it's done through the recombination of offspring frequencies. And that's, that's typically the significance of this video is this chromosome mapping and how it's done. There's a lot, a lot more detail to it in, in uh, genetics. However, just a slight introduction to the topic, since it is on the IMAT specifications, they, these are the little things that you should know. Okay, so we have finally concluded with the topic of the cell. In the next video and in the le next lecture, we're going to begin lecture three called Bioenergetics. And in that first video, we're going to talk about the energy currency of cells called ATP.